Hello underwater friends. You're almost on holiday and you want to get an action cam? Well, maybe I get the best option for you. In this video, we're gonna talk about the DJI Action 4 and you're gonna see it's a quite nice camera. It's about 145 grams. You can bring it to 18 meters underwater without a housing. So even if you have a housing and there is a little leak, no problem. It has a big CMOS sensor. It's one over 1.3 inches. The aperture is 2.8, which is very nice. So even for low light, you can have good results. The field of view can go up to 155 degrees, even though that's not what I use for my videos because it's too big. You can shoot 4K, 4x3, up to 60 frames per second, and even 120 frames per second if you're filming 4K, 16x9. For photo, you can do 10 megapixel pictures, which is okay, but not amazing. So this camera is very robust, very good quality. One of the things I really appreciate about this camera is that you can use log mode and 10-bit color. So it's really easy and nice to color correct it. The camera has two touchscreen, one in the front that is 1.4 inches and one in the back that is 2.25 inches. The battery size is 1770 milliamps, so it gives you about 160 minutes running time. The price is about $400, which is a little bit less than the competition. To start making videos, you have two options. Number one, you can press on the side, turn on the camera, and then you can just press on top to start the recording. When it stops, you still have options to take more videos. Otherwise, option number two, you can just start pressing on top, make your video, stop it, but then after a few seconds, it will shut down. But actually, compared to other cameras, like the GoPro, for example, the auto capture is much faster. So even if the camera is off and not using any battery, you just press and right away it starts recording. You can change the resolution and the frame rate. So first you press at the bottom where you can see the resolution and frame rate and then you can change it from 1080p all the way to 4K 4x3. When you're on 4K 4x3 you can only have 60 frames per second. It's okay for slow motion, especially if you're using 24 frames per second, but it's not amazing. If you go on 4K 16x9 then you can have all the way up to 120 frames per second, which is quite amazing. You can really do a very nice slow motion, but then the problem is that you cannot crop on post. If you're using 4x3, then you can crop the top and the bottom and eventually choose actually where you want your image to be selected. And like this, you have extra freedom on cropping. I prefer to film 16x9, 4K, 24 frames per second. It gives me a nice motion blur and I really like the cinematic look. For more freedom using your footage, you can use also 4x3, like this if you want to use social media that use 1x1 one one ratio or different sizes, then you can have the most of the image and decide what you want to use at the end. There is a very good image stabilization which is called Rocksteady. So you can go on Rocksteady, Rocksteady Plus, as you can see, the image is cropped a little bit more. If you have the Rocksteady off, then in some options, you can use gyro informations and do the stabilization in post. It's extra work, so I don't really recommend it. If you want to come dive in Bali, I put the link in the description. We organize day trips in Ahmed and Tulamben, so you can visit the US City Liberty, drift dives in Ahmed, and also macro dive sites. We can also accommodate private spotter if you want to have your own guide and not to worry about a group and be able to take pictures and films without worrying about a buddy. I also do courses. I can help you out for your video needs. So I do courses, private course from one to five days and you can learn how to edit and film underwater and make the best footage possible. And if you want, we also organize safaris in Bali. So we'll find the best dive sites for you, help you for accommodation and make sure that you spend a good trip with us. 
Then for the settings, you don't need to go on Pro. If you want, you can use the basic settings of the camera. The image is going to be vibrant and all of the settings will be automatic, which makes it much easier for you. If you decide to go on the Pro, then you have many more things that you can adjust. For the exposure, I keep it on Auto. The reason is that underwater, you cannot change it. So I put the EV compensation to zero and then you can go on ISO from 100 to 1600 max. I really recommend that you go on 100 mini and 400 maximum. There will be way less noise. For white balance, I try to use automatic, but the problem is, especially if you bring a light, the colors are going to become very red. And also, if there is a change in depth or something, then your image will change during your shot. So I recommend that you put probably 5,500 Kelvin or according to the light, if you bring some light. For the color, I go on D-Log M, which is the best for color grading. I will do a video on how I color grade my DJI images with DaVinci Resolve, and you're gonna see it's not so much hassle. If you prefer to make it easy, then you can choose to have the normal mode, which is gonna make vibrant colors and will be easier to process. Field of view, I like to have D-Warp, which is the equivalent of 15 millimeters. Otherwise, you can go on wide angle. D-Warp is the one I use all the time. It's the equivalent of 15 millimeter lens, which is way enough. And for me, it's what gives me the best result. Also, there is no fish eye problem that would make the image look a little bit weird. For the custom adjustments, I keep sharpness to minus one and also noise reduction to minus one. I prefer to do it all in post. If you don't want to worry, you can put on zero for both of them. But for me, if it's not sharp enough, I can always do it in post. And if there is a little bit noise as well, I prefer to have my computer do it instead of a small camera. And it's just a few cursors to move. So no big problem. Thanks for watching the video all the way to the end. Always makes me super happy. Don't hesitate to put a thumbs up and you can also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. Like this, you'll be notified when new videos come out. And by the way, the next video is gonna be how to color grade images of DJI with DaVinci Resolve. Bye bye, happy bubbles. See you soon in Bali.